Toyota champs and there's so many laptops coming out now but you know the kick XPS baby we're gonna be talking about the new XPS 15 and 17 big upgrades really big upgrades and if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you're interested in the XPS lineup what's going on come on you know no one's gonna test the XPS like me and put a thumbs up if you agree with that because my viewers already know this but anyway let's crack on and get into it and you know what I was thinking the next XPS series would be a little bit disappointing just because I didn't know what was happening with Intel and, and maybe I wanted an AMD CPU but these Intel CPUs actually look really good and I will do a buyer's guide so make sure you subscribe for that let's just get into the specs here this is a reviewer's guide I think we already know what the XPS you know externally it looks sort of like the same you know that beautiful infinity edge display thinnest bezels at anything out there still remember when this came out last year and I said your laptop will look like this one day still no other laptop looks like this and have a look at that one down there on the bottom right hand that white one oh and if you want to know why i don't have an xps 15 i was waiting for the i9 and white version it never come out or i was waiting for the white version of the xps 17 i'll tell you which one i'm going to go with but of course i'll get these in and review them and that white one there i thought i already had my yearly floppy to solid state moment the resizing of my bar but let me tell you these things here have definitely resized my bar again. So start with the XPS 15. Now one of the things here, new graphics of course, new CPUs, we'll talk about that in a sec, but we also have a new display as well. So wow, I didn't think we were gonna get a new display. So let's get into the specs there. Here we go, here are the specs. Now let's first talk about those CPUs. Intel 11th generation, and yes, I already know in the comments someone's there going, oh, didn't they have AMD, I'm not gonna buy it. Well, what they say with these 11th gen CPUs is fastest single core and the fastest at gaming. Not only that, add on Thunderbolt 4, add on new graphics, so the built-in graphics to the CPU. Now it's not XE graphics, they have the 96 CUs, and only has like 32 CUs, but what you're gonna get is the upgrade in encoding and decoding, quick sync, AV1, so all those programs that support that sort of stuff and now we're going to have the fastest single core apparently these still won't beat the amd in multi-core but if you're going to ask me what's the three most important things single core gaming performance and then the technologies like thunderbolt the quick sync and stuff like that for me that's more important than multi-core which i still think amd will be better and amd will use less power as well but you can get up to the i9 11900h now i'm just going to tell you now don't even bother with that just get the 11800h eight cores you're one and done that's what you want now it says here windows home and pro you know the drill in the description if you want to upgrade your windows home to windows pro i've got a link and discount code in the description you can also get offers 2019 so don't pay the extra for pro check out my link when it comes to the ram 3200 megahertz ram so it's faster ram now and up to 64 gigs these cpus do not support lpddr4x so i don't know why but they don't they still just use normal ddr4 we have two m.2 slots so whatever one thing about these 11th generation cpus is they support pci express 4 so 20 lanes of pci express 4 they've got more lanes than that but 20 coming from the cpu so if that's pci express 4 you should be able to put you know pci express 4 ssds in there also the graphics should get a boost in bandwidth so that should help out there now when it comes to the graphics i'll talk about the display too because there's something big with the display but in graphics we have RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti, 4 gigabytes, okay? 45 watts, this is XPS 15, XPS 17, something different, which has really got me excited. What's the performance of these? 45 watts, might be like a 1660, 2060, sort of like Max-Q, around that sort of area, more closer to a 1660, probably. A little bit disappointed, it's only 4 gig. I was hoping the TI would have 6 gigs, but they will be good graphics cards, and they get all the good stuff. You get all the features from the 30 series, so you do get the fast NVENC encoder, so in Premiere, it's going to be super fast for rendering and stuff like that it'll probably render most projects exactly the same as a more powerful graphics card just because it uses the same nvenc encoder although i would like more than four gigs there now when it comes to the display i didn't expect this here's all the display options i'll just get in a bit closer they say dolby vision as well you have the 4k uhd plus that's your normal led type of monitor it's 500 nits of brightness 100 adobe rgb now adobe rgb is better for photographers sort of thing then you have the new option so the new option here is this oled but it's three 
3.5K. Now, two models back with the XPS 15, when you had the choice between the OLED and the LED, I went with the LED just because it was brighter, 100 nits brighter, and it had better battery life. Now, that's not the case. Yes, it is brighter, so the normal LED display is brighter, but the OLED is 3.5K, so it should have better battery life now. Yes, OLED does use less battery when it's black, but when stuff is lit up, it does use more. Now, it does say display HDR 500 TB, and the other one says display HDR 400. Now, even though the 4K is 500 nits, it's brighter, you would think that would have the better HDR effect, but it won't. Because of the contrast and the micro contrast you can get between the bright and the dark areas you can get with OLED, it gives you more of a 3D effect and more of a HDR effect, even though it can't reach the peak brightness. It will have the better HDR effect. But this is 100% DCI P3, so they've gone for a different color gamut or tuned it for P3. That's more for video editors. Although the color gamut is so wide on both of them it really doesn't matter now i want to know which one in the comments you would choose the 3.5k oled or the 4k ultra hd i'm still undecided and you can also get a full hd plus as well which is actually 500 nits of brightness it's actually a decent display 130 watt power adapter there nothing else to be seen here same battery size same ports except they are thunderbolt 4 because with 11th gen cpus thunderbolt is actually built into the cpu but it is Thunderbolt 4, which is just Thunderbolt 3 with everything implemented. Same sort of size and weights there. Wi-Fi 6, but not 6E. So that's got me excited. Now let's get into the XPS 17. And I think we know what that looks like. No new displays here, it doesn't look like. It looks like we're just getting the CPU and GPU upgrades, which are pretty huge when you think about it. 30 series graphics is much better than 20 series and 11th gen CPUs. I haven't tested them yet, but they look really promising. But with the XPS 17, remember both of these are 130 watt packages. But the XPS 17 has much better cooling with that vapor chamber, okay? It can sustain more power, more watts, and it can go harder for longer. The downside is it is a little bit heavier. Well, it is a 17 inch anyway, but the vapor chamber does add weight. But you can get the 11980HK, which I believe is a 65 watt part there. Same thing, Windows Home, Windows Pro. Upgrade in the description, get that. Same sort of RAM set up there, same sort of SSDs. But here's the big show, right? Here is the big show. Now, this is a strange combination you can actually get an xps 17 without a graphics card yes you can just use the intel hd graphics if you just want a big screen laptop that looks gorgeous looks amazing you can do that you also have an option of an rtx 3050 but 60 watts right remember the xps 15 was only 45 watts i don't know why they didn't have the ti i guess maybe it was too close to a 3060 once you add more wattage i don't know but the big show here is RTX 3060 Wolf. What is this? Is this a typo? Four gigabytes. One thing that doesn't compute with me is in a 130 watt package, how we're getting 70 watts on the GPU when you consider that CPU is a HK and it's going to be using bucket loads of power there. And yes, to my photographer friend, Benjamin Cohen, go for the XPS 17. The battery charge issues are fixed. Although when you hit this CPU and GPU at once, you're going to get some sort of battery drain because 70 watts into a 130 watt package with a you know power hungry CPU as well. Yeah, but again, four gigabytes. I hope it's a typo. But there is one saving grace for both of these. You have Thunderbolt, so you can always add a GPU if you need more video memory. And of course, these gorgeous displays here, the Full HD and the 4K Ultra HD+, Plus, which actually has a really wide color gamut because it's both 100% Adobe and 99% P3. So it has the widest color gamut out of all the displays. 130 watt package there, and that 90 watt there is when you don't get the GPU. 97 watt hour battery and all Thunderbolt 4 so everything is Thunderbolt 4 so that's awesome only slight disappointments is the 4 gigabytes on the RTX 3060 and the weight is still heavy that's the price of the vapor chamber there but all in all these things look amazing stay tuned for my buyer's guide I'll have lots of content on these XPS laptops you know it I'll catch you in the next one guys tally ho